Everybody knew somebody was there. That this person was pregnant and she's now dead. This woman was pregnant, she's now dead. Oh, I lost my sister, she was pregnant. Everybody knows people who have died from maternal death in Sierra Leone. Seven years after the end of the Civil War, Sierra Leone is still struggling to rebuild its healthcare system. Even the few relatively modern hospitals are chronically underfunded. Corruption is a problem and they lack many of the most basic facilities. Are the relatives around? One shocking consequence that is often overlooked is that one in eight women in Sierra Leone dies during birth as opposed to one in 4,000 in developed countries. Currently, we're examining the woman. We did a Doppler, ultrasound examination on the abdomen, and uh, we didn't get a fetal heart. So that means that we lost the baby. We, we have to get the blood for her. We have to get at least two liters. She's now been resuscitated, and we've got, we, we try to get two liters. That means if we need to do an operative procedure, we may need the blood, because she's still living. Although healthcare is supposed to be free for pregnant women, in fact, this is seldom true. Patients and their families are often forced to pay for treatment that they simply can't afford. In a country where over 50% live on less than a dollar a day, and a quarter live in extreme poverty, the poorer you are, the more likely you are to die giving birth. You know how many days that woman died in the office in Panama? Or for say, when they say one fifteen, I help they help you. Hey, you for cancer every ten kids. So if you need medicine, now your own business that that money, you know, even do for pay the people they are not Go try for pain blood for the woman. The woman he lost boku blood for put that in there, and right now he need blood. He need medicine a day. They need blood. I don't tell you. Not go over again. I say go find blood for him. So so strong man then. Then we will give blood. They will pull blood out and they will give the woman. You understand? We need a lot of financial help. We need a lot of help with building these infrastructures. Hospitals must be built. We must have proper theatres, like I said before. And then we tackle the personnel, having trained, qualified medical workers in every aspect. We need a proper blood banking system. Some hospitals do not have proper water supply. Some hospitals do not have proper electricity or constant electricity supply. I look at it as a gross violation of women's human rights. We lose so many people. Although the government recognizes the problem, its critics believe that they are not doing enough to prevent so many pregnant women dying. For many years, Issa Cole has campaigned to raise awareness of the problem and like many women in Sierra Leone, has lost a close friend in childbirth. Adam has started bleeding. She went to the midwife. There she went to deliver. She delivered the baby and started bleeding. Adama died and her aunt Sarah is now struggling to look after the baby. We born now. The baby been big. The first time for life born. So the baby been big. So we come born now. It is say half past nine, half past seven. So nine now, it change. Begin bleed, then the rush with her and come on my soaps. For the next time my soaps now, now they die. I think she was feared of not having money. And she was feared because of the bills, because they already told her um, she's going through an operation. She didn't have the money and she didn't know where she's going to, if she borrowed the money, where should we get the money back to pay the person? Women are faced with an impossible decision, whether to seek help from untrained midwives or to try to go to hospital knowing they can't afford the treatment. I get Bele, Bele asked me for 30. So as I wake, bleeding begin come up at me. I begin bleeding eight. 
So we're going to have a situation, it's operation. Money not there. So I'm able, again, I just a bleed no more. I just can't bond the picking now. The picking sleep one day, make it two day, he die. If you go to hospital, you don't get money, they die. If you get off money at the hospital, they the whole land, they say, but you full up the money, you they die. If you not your God, would teach me and see, me, they cannot die. Then give me that in the world and say, I'll go. You cannot get the money for pay, all the money. Me and see, they cry, they go and let let money, money, all day. And the money, now they cause this problem, why would they die in this country? The money. Sierra Leone is divided into 13 districts, only seven of which offer even basic emergency health care to pregnant women. Limited road access and poor communications makes it often impossible for isolated communities to access medical services in time. Al Hassan's son, Sana, was only three years old when his mother, Hava, died giving birth to twins. Like many women in Sierra Leone, she lived a long way from hospital and couldn't reach treatment in time. A woman will be married or for extreme given. I want to understand. She been left from born last year, March 2019. Me to a woman who will be there between me and not get no paraba. Less the sick, the belay way been done sick, now you born. Left and born. Al Hassan has never recovered from Hava's death and regularly visits her grave. That woman died when really Usa Te Usa Sidonso. I get that he hit the heart. Although Hava did have access to a local maternal health center, Anne Marie Starks, who runs it, works all alone and has just two years basic training. Her daughter was my patient. She was attending the clinic regularly. So when she came to my center to join the clinic, I advised her that you are a previous cesarean section. You have to deliver at the government hospital. Your case is very serious. So what she was coming, attending the clinic always. By the time now her labor started, they didn't come earlier to the center. They come late. And at that time, I tried to refer the patients, but there was no vehicle, no way. So suddenly, she passed away. Another family torn apart by the death of her mother is Kai's. Her daughter, Adele, died because she was not referred to hospital in time. Kai now struggles to look after her grandchild and is driving her family deeper into poverty. Eighteen years. Eighteen years. Mm -hmm. Adele's age is eighteen years. Eighteen, eighteen. Eighteen. When she died. Adele's baby is now four months old and seriously malnourished. <laughs> <laughs> Adele was forced to deliver, and the baby was expelled. The TBA resuscitated the baby, and the baby was saved. But the mother was suffering from uh, bleeding, severe bleeding, which is postpartum hemorrhage and um, retained placenta. This retained placenta lead her to death. Many women still rely on untrained TBAs or traditional birth attendants. They are found in every village and community throughout Sierra Leone and offer a cheaper alternative to the modern healthcare which the government promised would be free. It's okay 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 free. 
Dr. Bundu runs the Makeni Hospital. He believes that there are three main reasons for the death of so many pregnant women. The delay in seeking medical care, the delay in reaching a hospital, and finally, the delay in receiving adequate treatment when they arrive. One of the reasons for first is they might be the fear in the people that they are going to be asked to pay in the hospital for services. <laughs> they go to alternative sources who are not trained, but they have the confidence of the local people. Nationwide, if we do it by districts, Bombali has the lowest maternal mortality thanks to massive support from the reproductive health sponsored by the UN agencies, like UNFPA. They are giving us drugs, they are giving, off, giving us surgical sundries, and they are giving us incentives so that to motivate the staff and work effectively. They don't have to pay for care. Dr. Bundu's hospital is the exception rather than the rule because he receives additional UN funding. But most other hospitals and health centers aren't so fortunate. Janet and Fatmata run a government health center. Without proper funding, they face an uphill struggle to encourage women to come to them for treatment. So many pregnant women come here for antenatal clinics. They come for checkup, they come for examinations. We used to give them their routines. Of course, some don't come because of ignorance also. Some usually say we don't have money. But as long as they are pregnant women, we used to tell them, come, even if you don't have money. Some even refuse to come, thinking, saying, I don't have money unless you go to their houses. And okay, then, come and let's go. Come, let's go. Come, mm -hmm. let's go. Mm -hmm. Go for your uh, 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 drugs. I've not been paid for the past three years now almost. I've not been paid a single cent. Well, I've been surviving through patients by the little amounts they give after buying drugs and stationery. What is left we use? Mm. Healthcare is supposed to be free, more for uh, pregnant women, under fives, and uh, vulnerable people. But we used to ask for money because we are not paid. Sometimes, whenever they don't have, we treat them just to save life. We know we are fighting to save two lives. Tired of seeing so many women die and tired of waiting for the government to act, communities like this one have set up their own savings scheme to cover the cost of emergency maternity care. Okay, and the women there, the police there, now the meeting don't start. If anybody talk, I mean, I like, anybody make side talk, then they can let them come on here. Yeah. Anybody will not get police, uh, let them go, let them come here. Once, once done. While the government is encouraging schemes like this one, for people who have so little in the first place, this is an additional burden they can ill afford. The real answer is for the government to act on its promise to provide free health care for all pregnant women. Dr. Samuel Cabo is the director of the Reproductive Health Program at the Ministry of Health. Before the war, we had about five, on, five to six hundred doctors working in government. After the war, we had less than 100. They all went away because of the poor salaries. So what we say, what do you want to do? You, you improve the salaries and a lot of them will come back. Some of the staff are so poorly paid. Some of them do not get a salary at all. A lot of them are volunteers. And so where they depend, or what they depend actually on, is what they get out of their, their work on a daily basis. When they go, what patients pay them, that is what they, that is what they depend on. I'm a doctor. In the district where I was working, there was a time I was the only doctor for months uh, at a time. I was a physician, I was a surgeon, I was a pediatrician, I was a public health surgeon, I was the administrator. And then you are so poorly paid. And then you ask me if you will not want to have these people pay you so that you can be able to take care of yourself and your family. So this is important for us. In as much as we want to help the, the hospital, we want to help the women directly, but, the, uh, but I think one of the ways that we can help them is that if we can get these staff well remunerated, then, they can able, then we can have a hold on them, have them accountable to us, then they can be able to deliver services.
But the question remains, why isn't the government prioritizing women's health when most of those who died giving birth in Sierra Leone could have been saved with the necessary care? Women like Issa Cole want the Sierra Leonean government to take steps to ensure that all women enjoy their right to life. The human rights has to come in at some places as well as the government need to come in also. We ourselves, the women, need to advocate for ourselves that we are suffering. We are dying because of lack of knowledge. We are dying because we are poor. We are dying because there, it looks as if there is no one, there is no one that is hearing our stories. <laughs>